Okay, you guys, I have got to share all the flowers with you. My garden has never looked this good. There's so many different types of flowers, which is something I am, like I really worked hard to put a bunch of different varieties of flowers and it's really paid off. So this, this view right here especially is one of my favorites because I just emptied a little packet of seeds right there, left it alone and they came up beautifully. And it's like, oh, it's so pretty. And then, I'm, of course, I'm starting this new wall. I showed you guys that. A new, I'm going to be planting this whole entire bank. Um, like, I've got everything full in here the way I like it right now. So, I think I'm going to start, I've been starting to work upwards. I've got some way up there in between the yucca. I've got, um like a grid of corn planted. So that will come up, like be a succession planting. And then all this space right here, I have to put in some type of retaining wall so the the soil doesn't just fall down, you know, and come running down when, the, when it rains and stuff. So I have to figure out a retaining wall. Um, and then just slowly planting as I'm doing. So this space right here in the middle is kind of bald. It's like balding and stuff, it looks really bad. So I've been slowly adding plants. These carrot blooms, you guys. So this is an actual carrot. Um, this is like a carrot that I didn't pick and I just let it go to seed. So this is what the flowers look like. They really look like Queen Anne's lace. They're very beautiful. They got beautiful structures. They're big, huge attractors of bugs but then we've got a decorative carrot and you can really see the difference the decorative carrot um, stays in a um, more of an umbil shape and of course it's pink the bloom as that bloom ages it will turn pink um, and it's just so pretty but the carrot over there the actual carrot it has more of a rounded shape instead of like a flat disc shape so that's just something interesting I've noticed. And then this yarrow, like the little tiny bees and stuff really like these umbel shaped flowers. Um, you know, I plant all kinds of different things like these big echinacea and daisies and larkspur for the big bees and stuff, but there's also little teeny tiny bees and little teeny tiny bugs that really favor these smaller shaped flowers like the small clusters of flowers which is why I grow so many I try to grow so many different types here the fennel is getting ready to go into bloom and look how it's got such interesting shape too and these blooms are yellow so look at all of the little this is just a dollar store mix it's got bachelor buttons California poppies um, black, these Coreopsis, these little pink flowers. I don't know what those little pink flowers are, but they're so cute. And all mixed together, it's just such a happy mix. And we got it backed by the Gladiolus, which is looking fabulous, and the Echinacea. I need to plant more stands of Echinacea back up on this hill. I think I'm going to go in heavy with the Echinacea this fall. Like once, I'm going to let a lot of these plants go to seed. Especially this one I'm going to take seed from because it's doing, it does the best. It's the biggest echinacea that I've got. I mean, look how big, look how big these flowers are. They're just enormous. They're so pretty. And this is the echinacea perpetua. I think that's what it's called. It's the purple one that's like a North, North American native. And it's always, always covered in bugs and bees and butterflies and everything. Like, the bees choose this plant over any others. For some reason, I'm not having any luck growing any patchouli this year, which really, 
is not great. I've, I really want some patchouli in the garden. It's been, the last year I didn't grow it either. Um, so yeah, but the borage is all doing really good. I've been setting out these water trays. They're just plant, um, plastic plant bottoms. Um, and I put little rocks in them. You guys would not believe how many bees and wasps and things flock to these and, and drink out of them. Um, I read somewhere or heard somewhere that bees, a, a colony of bees takes like seven gallons of water a day to produce honey. Now I don't know if that's true or just something I heard. Uh, so I started leaving out trays of water and man, they, I have to refill them twice throughout the day because they drink it so fast especially the wasps so I've got that one this one is almost empty and I just refilled it and then I've got this big one over here that usually stays shaded and the wasps they favor this one it's just something to think about I moved a few plants around because as things are filling in and like maturing and growing um, space is getting limited and things were getting like shaded out and not being able to grow properly so I had to move them around and you know just making it look more co cohesive like I'm going to come in here soon and clip out this um, meadow sweet for a shaman incense that recipe that I'm doing the borage is looking so interesting the zinnias are just starting to bloom so here's one and there's one in the side yard that's actually like a peach tan color. We got the amaranth. Only the really protected amaranth are doing good. And look, my butterfly milkweed is going to flower this year, hopefully. I planted these last year. I thought they were not going to do anything, but surprise. And then just today, this stand of bee balm is starting to bloom. You can see the blooms are just starting to open. They're like these lantern shapes, very cool looking. And then they start to bloom. Uh, let me show you the one in, let me show you the one over here. It's so, this one's been blooming, or this one has been in bloom already for like, I don't know, almost a month now, or a couple weeks at least. And you guys, the bees love this one. Look at it. Look, it's full of bees. Always full of bees. Let me show you that zinnia. The liatris is getting ready to bloom. Oh, my camera's running out of space. These hollyhocks are like six feet tall. And look here. And the butterfly bushes are in bloom. Anyways, guys. Oh, I gotta make some space. Good evening, my friends. Um, I just wanted to show you. It's it's about 8 o'clock at night, but I wanted to show you. I'm up here in the top half of the garden. You can actually see the humidity, like, laying on the mountains. It's so hot right now. Like, just standing out here, you start sweating. Hey, you two. Look how long my gourds are. Okay, so I planted them up here. Half of the gourds are all the way up there to the top of the corn. And just they're just going crazy on the corn. And the other half of the gourds are totally encasing the bottom of this mailbox and ladder that I put here. You know, I'm all about the whimsical elements in my garden which is why you could see I've got things hanging in the trees look how big the corn is though I've been up here hand pollinating so this is what it looks like when it's in pollination you take these and you just stick them down in this stuff boom pollinates the corn that way you ensure corn Otherwise, you get spotty corn and um, a weird harvest. Got the beautiful spider flowers. 
And we have a pepper there. Some other things I planted. Here is the pickling cucumber almost all the way down the hill. We've got the love lies bleeding. Just hang in there. See, I love the look of um, the pokeweed. I think it just looks so striking. It has a very commanding presence. And you can make ink with the berries. So it's a really great tool in witchcraft as well. All the borage is looking pretty intense. This um, blue kiwi honeywort started to bloom. Look at it. So cute. The packaging for the seeds is very misleading because the, the picture of this on the seed pack is like right up here. Makes the flower, flowers look a lot bigger than they are. Everything is just looking so full and lush. Look at this giant sunflower. This isn't a mammoth Russian because the center of a mammoth Russian is way bigger. So I don't know what kind of variety that is. All the nigella right here is blooming. All the fennel looking beautiful. This bed is really filled in this past year and I love it. The watermelon has just spread all over this spot. And this morning glory, you could see, it's taken over the arch. And then we have another morning glory plant on this side of the arch. We do have a small watermelon forming right here. Uh, the other one we had, something decided to come and take a couple bites out of it, as you could see. Um, right there. Yeah, someone took a couple bites of it and just left it on the vine. Great manners. These vines are up to the top almost. These guys are all over the branches. And I was over here doing some, you could see I'm like um, attaching all of these uh, wisteria circles I have on here. And I'm going to kind of make like a a wisteria or you know like vine cuttings I'm gonna like encase this structure in vine cuttings that way I can put the little bistro set I have in here and hang out in here but look the moonflower vine is getting some flower buds exciting look how big my devil's lettuce is there's two deer that keep coming in the, into the garden and eating um, my tomatoes. Look there, structure. This is my favorite corner right here. Look how colorful. So we've got sunflowers, calendula, carrot blossoms. These are decorative carrots, Dara. I love these and the insects love these shape of blooms. And plus we've got the Rose of Sharon, blue chiffon, such a beautiful color. I love to collect blue flowers because they're so rare occurring in nature. And then with these um, yellow fennel blooms, oh, just so beautiful. And down here we've got some little morning glories starting to bloom. These little gomfrinas have done so well in this spot. Lots of tomatoes on the vine. Lots of stuff. We just got a really big rainstorm last night, so everything is looking so lush and um, full. I'm just loving it. So here, I'm gonna be putting up my gate. Once I get a post. I have to go to Lowe's. I went and looked at them today, but I didn't have the space to, 
to bring it home. If you go to Lowe's, you guys, right now, they're starting to put all of the rose bushes and so many of the perennials on clearance. Like, now is the time. They had ro big, um, big giant rose standards and rose bushes for like 5 and $10. Usually, they're like 30 bucks. So, you cannot beat that. And plus, they're putting a lot of different annuals. And, we, and if you're, like, in my area, we still have a long time till we get a frost. Like, November is when we get our frost. So, it's quite a bit of, long, quite a bit of time. Look how fabulous the oak leaf hydrangea is looking after that rainstorm. Everything's looking so beautiful over here. We've got ginger. I've got to put some kind of containment around this plant. Are you kitties ready to go get some gravy? Did you know I got some gravy for you? I got some kitty gravy. You want some kitty gravy, Dixie? I got some. Sage is trying to figure out what the hell those cicadas are. <laughs> Sagey! You do Sagey! Dixie, you want some gravy? You want to get some gravy, Dixie? Some kitty gravy? Now everybody's got their food.